What's your one to you, hello everyone? Welcome to the Best Materials Project. Today's discussion is the C++ Pro course that we've got scheduled for July. So, we decided that uh, we're going to go along with the Linux kernel. Right. Oh, uh, ah, yeah, it is a, is it a chicken and egg problem. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Sort of thing. But that being said, it will help to pair the uh, Linux kernel uh, with Group 2. And I think there's also a TOS system installer as well, so there's three parts that you, we're going to be looking at. And of course we've got the AMD kernel, uh, so the AMD uh, build environment, the AMD build script, or like the AMD build host on Ubuntu, the AMD pilot, optimizer, AMD architecture. All the Microsoft manufacturers, all that stuff, and uh, obviously the software engineer guys, and then obviously the compilers as well. Calls for the AMD uh, NVIDIA fans for it, uh, back in the day, NVIDIA AI programming, machine learning, it seems to be all the rage. So it's, it's a case of, uh, like, say, for example, we included the OpenGL and we use the OpenGL or we got the Unreal Engine toolkit on Ubuntu, Unreal Engine 4. This is getting into the nitty gritty, so this is like... Uh, experimental, more academic than experimental. Uh, but a lot of people are exposing this artificial intelligence, this machine learning to other platforms. Like, uh, it's all very uh, clever and uh, all that, and I'm not sure I understand it all myself, but yeah, artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, and that, uh, how that evolves out of, and say, for example, if you want to do, so if you want to make applications, okay, uh, that probably the majority of people, I think there's going to be more games consoles out there than there is PCs or laptops. And obviously the most of all will be mobile phones and tablets, so there's going to be many, many mobile phones and tablets uh, and many, and many uh, game consoles. So, uh, obviously like, you have to take that into consideration what sort of computer out there. And of course some technical stuff as well, uh, as regards uh, these self-driving cars, and that's that built in C++ using the well, the competing feature uh, in the background that is probably something that every day users don't get to, get to find out about, but nobody thinks about the software that's running these self driving cars. There's a standard behind it, there's a C standard. Uh, there's always going to it now, it's one of those things uh, that's it's stricter than the standard that builds your computers, your, your computer programs, and stuff like that. Uh, obviously, it's a harder standard to build. Oh, it's, it's, it's put through in more like a pro sort of build. Oh, it's, the consequences, of course, of getting the build right or wrong in that, in that, in that situation. Obviously, it's much more relevant, so this, there's a, a fairly stringent standard. So, yeah, maybe we're, maybe we're happy making games using Unreal Engine. You can drop Unreal Engine on lots of different platforms, certainly 10 or 20 different platforms. So once you've built a game in it, it's got all the build environments in the background. Uh, look at these build targets in greater detail later on, something that as we get more and more complex, by the time we get to the, the top of the tree though, we can get to see how it can, can, can get it all to work. Generally speaking, it seems to be like Ubuntu, C++ on Ubuntu looks pretty decent, if I can follow them, so it's pretty alright. Uh, obviously you're not going to go to work and do that, 
maybe there's some jobs out there that use that. Uh, but I, I don't know. It seems like it seems like for that sort of thing, it seems to be a window suit, you know. But you know, it's an evolving thing. It's a continuum. Like it's a like it's an evolving continuum. Of course, another area of specialisation we could look at look at device drivers. Which, again, it's one of those things. Ain't it? We're probably not. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Actually, we'll probably avoid that for now. But it's one of those things, isn't it? Device drivers. Uh, you can see wonderfully how it all interconnects in a component-wise manner to get the system to work. Then of course you have the system of systems we're still speaking is the internet or TCP IP and standards. Right, also on the server side a computer game. You start and stop the computer game, don't you? You know, you turn it on and turn it off. Uh, whereas these service sides, they carry on going, they're on there 24 hours a day. Uh, and they're running the services in the background. That's kind of like a different kind of specialism. The whole thing to solve all of this with is Ubuntu snaps or snaps.io for Ubuntu, which allows you to do a client side snap and the, a server side snap as well. So if you want to build your own Bitcoin uh, crypto wallet sort of thing, it'd be easier to do that way because you can have it on the server. And uh, yeah, have the application. Uh, have your application run on, on and obviously the front, on the website itself you could download the package and users could install that. Of course all these different build environments and stuff like that's where you get stuff like this remote procedure called an XML where we encountered it. Uh, so that you know in the internet of things there's, there's you know millions of different versions and millions of different products and you're trying to get some sort of standardised in, uh, interface. Of course, you could take it further, call you, with uh, Ableton Max for Life. That's another handy tool, so definitely could pair Ableton Max for Life. Uh, that's definitely a worthy study, because that you know, allows you to build. It's one thing not everybody can do C++, especially with a Linux command line. So, it's better to use tools like Blender, Unreal Engine, of course, and obviously something like Max for Live on Ableton. I don't think there is any any source. So there's lack of support. Yeah, uh, of course, a lot of people do you know ask about program VST plugins and so it's like, well, you kind of don't do that. You can use Juice Framework, but you can't use build tools. Just like you don't program, like we look with the OpenGL on Ubuntu, you don't program a whole game like that, like, anymore. That's not kind of I've done in the 90s, it was done like that, in the 70s, 80s, what have you. Uh, in today's world, you probably can just use Unreal Engine, really. Uh, so it seems a miracle, but of course, we're missing this Linux server thing here as well for DNS and VPN and stuff like that and this lightweight direct active protocol because uh, without like say explaining too much about how the internet does all this and all that uh, packetized data communications protocols, TCP IP protocols uh, we're not going too much of a jolt in, in, in that uh, in, See uh, how 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 our team can work together in real time on a project. So, for example, like if you have a you know when you start look at production credits, you can start seeing like same in the movies as well. Uh, sort of like uh, if you um, yeah, there's indie game developers. Like indie games are pretty cool. Unreal Engine is all about that. Generally speaking, uh, it's one of them. It's, it, uh, of course, you've got uh, pay royalties and have, have fees and the rest of it, but 
That being said, if realistically, if it's a business, realistically, you're going to want to use something like Blender, an Unreal Engine. Uh, there's quite a lot in there. If you're a bit uh, into creative and print, uh, you know, like creative types, film and print, uh, you're probably best off with Adobe. Right, and uh, same with music, you know, obviously the AW. Computers are used in every possible way these days, uh, really, from, you know, every little thing. So there is... Even today, in today's popular culture, you know, they're still seen as nerdy and geeky, and special and intelligent and, uh, and the rest of it, but... Coming back from the 90s and stuff like that, yeah, sure. But in today's world, uh, you can quite... It, if you look at the whole computer and IT thing, you've got everything from virtual reality uh, to sensors and uh, hospital medical equipment to the internet and uh, obviously self-driving cars. Uh, and in terms of art and creative, you have obviously graphics, tablets, uh, video game controllers and there's, uh, 3D printers, sort of like. And, these digital producers, you know, digital production skills uh, are the way that the economy is going. And of course, robots and robotics as well. Again, it's all uh, simulated. You may use something like R programming language or Wolfram, Wolfram Alpha and uh, Mathematica. Uh, my favourite is Maple, of course. Been using that. Uh, for about 20 years maybe, so it's about, so I've been maybe 17 years using that. Uh, so it's a handy fit tool to have these other tools, so obviously if you want to do some fancy uh, mathematics, um, you spending, uh, you know, whatever, seven years of your life or whatever, building the, uh, programming, you know, in C++, the hardware, you know, like one long code, like climbing Mount Everest, and it's kind of how it's done, like it's kind of done, like using, using a team uh, and, and, and teamwork, and uh, obviously that's how you achieve, uh, you know, these project results, you can get projects on the finish line, uh, of course, so, there's lots of different ways. We've covered it all in these past couple of years doing the Basic Materials podcast. Uh, all, all the way from uh, using the SoundCloud app. Obviously, we've changed it now, so all the way from the SoundCloud app. Just uh, basically doing what I'm doing now. I should just use your mobile phone in a hands free case. In this case, I'm just using the cheap gaming headset and my mobile phone. Uh, and then, obviously, posting. Uh, Adobe, I'll just blank out the screen and put a flyer on. Uh, so all the way through. So, so yeah, so we've got 3D printing, robotics, uh, the internet of course, cameras, obviously uh, video games as well as massive. Uh, I think I've read somewhere that video games make more money than a film now, so that's interesting. So that's why you expect these sorts of skills to be in demand at uh, recruitment agencies and future employers. Uh, and also if you look at the academic side, training, the training industry is absolutely massive as well. Cause, uh, with C++, well, it's one of them, it's... Uh, if you want to be productivity and that, if you, it's, it depends on what you're trying to achieve, really. So. If you're just doing it for the love of the programming and, and to learn and get better at practicing that sort of thing, achieving more and more and more, it's a great study. It's, it's one of those things, but if you're looking to uh, you know, do things in real time, uh, with, you know, with daily results and daily deliverables and such like, I'd say that the broad spectrum C++ developer like, is pretty scarce, really. You actually can do it. And that the fact of the matter is, this, although a lot of colleges and a lot of universities and there's a lot of training about it, like they're kind of missing the point of it all. For example, so if you if you're a business and you're paying selling or whatever, some of these video games there's you know several hundred people working on them, maybe even several thousand people all in. 
so you know, Mr. like C++ so it kind of doesn't fit into that uh, but what he does fit in, into is is actually building the software that allows it to occur but also working out like it's one of those things optimizations are, they're supposed to like spread throughout the economy or the ecosystem as things as things get better generally uh, of course, the state of the art today is uh, most expensive. Like people, I know Nvidia make graphics cards that are a couple of thousand pounds each, but most of my products are unaware that Nvidia is making these GPU servers in the background. Probably the cheapest thing is about eighty thousand pound. So for example, so for a computer, it looks like, like a little beer fridge. <laughs> you know, so people are forgetting that, and obviously academic departments and. Especially materials engineering uh, and CAD CAM and definitely architecture, especially big architectural practices. They're moving in on, on highly complex computing or high performance computing. You may have heard about it, HPC. Extremely, extremely expensive, but most people, uh, I think the uh, these esports, I mean, if you look at these esports builds, you can look at the guys who build these extreme systems and overclock them and they tell you 10 to 20 thousand pounds for a computer we built a brand new computer for 300 and around 350 quid all in uh, uh, this is a relatively simple computer all right but from it's one of them we're certainly getting to that stage in the game where to get things done, you're not really going to do it from the lights, command line and uh, C++ with the answer ISO and all the C++ sites up and the standards. Really, you're going to spend your working day, you know, kind of like day in, day out, hitting all kinds of software from uh, Adobe. Obviously, Adobe have cornered the market on that. All right. And, uh, you know, they've got uh, everything for it. And, Obviously, all the companies are competing with each other as well, so there's, you know, there's a lot of competition, uh, what have you. So, yeah, why would you want to do Pro C++ programming? All right, so, it doesn't it doesn't make sense if your business and, and your business is apps or your, or your business is content on websites and stuff like that. It's kind of a waste of your time. Don't feel put out or, like, or less clever you know, or don't feel stupid against it. So since there's a lot of mysticism and a lot of people chewing, you know, chewing the fat and all that, right. but it don't really the idea, the whole concept, the whole principle behind it, the whole idea behind it, yeah, is that so you just use your tools and they work better, or you get you get you get to serve more customers for less electricity, or for example, if you speed up the applications, you compile better. Using some optimized compilation, what have you, sort out there's some platform specifics, and it goes 10 times quicker, which you can do, especially like code that takes a long time to go through. You can work on it and get that speed up, uh, but then if it's 10 times quicker, you just save like a tenth of your, your energy bill, what have you. There's a, a bit math features, features per watt. So how many features can you get per watt of electricity? And, and there's a billion in time in, it, in this side of it, of course. Businesses are always got to look at modifying and adapt it for business purposes, like. So that being said, uh, still hold on to me uh, 2022 recommendation, which is C Sharp and .NET with an Xbox as well, so you can have a Windows laptop and an Xbox next to each other and program in the C Sharp, obviously I have Unity, so does you, all the tools are kind of there, if you know what I mean, obviously if you you can, it's, it's one of them, right, so, uh, you know, really it is. So obviously training goes on, going all IT teaching, or IT guru phenomena. Right, well, you've got to you know ask that question really. So am I better off just using the tools instead of like you know taking taking the extremely long route out? Because the market is pretty much cornered anyway already. It's already more saturated. 
Oh, anyways, anyway, it's time to get going, all that we 20 minutes on. Okay, this is the best material project, like and subscribe. Please feel free to visit the website. Okay, thank you, until next time.